Welcome to Dying Generation. I'm Bunny Williams, and as always with me is... Steven Scott Norfolk. So what's going on this week? How you doing? Uh, living indoors. Living indoors. Yeah, living indoors. It's very nice. I don't know if I talked about it on the last show, but moved into an apartment. Well, last last show you were still struggling to get that apartment. Well, finally made it in. Been here about a week, and it, it's funny because, um, you know, we, we've got the usual accoutrements, a kitchen, a bathroom with a shower and bathtub and stuff, but I've been having a, a problem taking a shower every day because I keep forgetting that we have a shower. Right. You know, and then suddenly it'll occur to me, wait a minute, uh, you've got a shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go take a shower, but there's been, like, I think I've only taken, like, three showers this week because I'm just so used to showering in one of the houses at work that it doesn't occur to me when I'm home to right. take a shower, <laughs> you know, and stuff. So still getting uh, reacclimated to uh, living like a normal human being. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Good, 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 good. Been, been able to cook my own food and stuff. I've probably saved about, I bet about $70, $100 this week, just because I'm able to cook my own food and stuff. And you still living with that other guy? Yep. Yeah, we uh, moved into a two-bedroom and stuff. It's going pretty good, having a good time. Haven't seen him much uh, in the last uh, three days, though, because... He bought a PlayStation 3, and so... That's, that's, that's the best out of roommate. That's, I know, that's a life eater. That's a life eater right there. Yeah, ones you, ones you don't see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he bought a PlayStation 3 and some game called Two Worlds and sort of fell into it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but things are going pretty good. Uh, working a shit ton of hours, man. I think last week I worked like 63 hours. Well, that's that's good, too, if you're not stringing yourself out, you know. Well, I am, though. It's killing me. Like, last, yesterday I worked from 6 p.m. until noon today, 18 yeah. hours straight. Luckily, I don't have to do anything but sit on my ass and watch movies on my phone. Uh-huh. And stuff. And so, watched uh, The Wrestler. That was a good movie. Darren Aronofsky, and then watched uh, Rachel Getting Married. Rachel Getting Married? Yeah. It's a good movie with Anne Hathaway. Oh. Uh. Because I just can't get enough of looking at Anne Hathaway, man. <laughs> you know, she's just too much. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but uh, speaking, speaking of women. Okay. Uh, online dating uh, weirdness going on. All right, what's going on I, there? Well, I met this uh, met this woman online. I text her. She's four foot eleven, and anybody who knows me, uh, like my my brother says, four foot eleven and stubby's in heaven. <laughs> and uh, so she was four foot eleven and kind of nice looking. Had pictures of her body, and it was friggin' hot. So I messaged her up, and we got to chat, and we chatted for a couple of days, and then we started talking on the phone. And talked on the phone for a couple of days, and we're trying to set up a date for this past Friday. But my boss was pussyfooting around with letting me know whether I could, you know, have the night off or not. Right. So, talked to her, like, Wednesday morning, I guess it was. And uh, we were just chatting along and stuff, and, and uh, I told her I was still waiting here about Friday and stuff. And then... uh Somehow we got into the conversation about me being me living in my car for three months. Right. Oh my God. This woman completely fucking flipped out on me. And like read me the riot act. How exactly do you become homeless? Well, I explained what her what happened. Yeah, but I mean, I've never been homeless and then God, you're you're uh working a minimum wage job, you couldn't even get me out of bed for minimum wage and this, that, and the other, and, and bitching about how, you know, and if we don't know if you're going to be off Friday or not, I mean, that's going to ruin my entire weekend if you can't. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> you know? 
So she just like lambasted me for like 30 minutes, and she's like, well, "I got to go in the store here and get a sandwich. I'll talk to you later." Never heard from her again. Okay. But I was really, like, do you really need to hear from her again? <laughs> no, not really. I was I was hoping she was gonna, not. I was hoping she was going to call and ask if we were going out on Friday, and I'll be like, I don't really see any reason to. <laughs> Good Lord, dude, it was. How dare you be homeless? You bastard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and what's funny is one of the first messages she sent she sent me back was, you know, that we had a lot in common. I was like, well, what do we have in common? She goes, compassion and empathy and accepting <laughs> people for who they are. <laughs> oh, Jesus. She, funny, funny. Are you okay? Should I call 911? <laughs> Okay, compassion and empathy. And then, and then after she tells me that she's looking for somebody in the same financial situation she is and bitches at me about make a minimum wage and this, that, and the other, she goes, I'm not materialistic. Um, oh, yeah. I think you might want to look up the definition of materialistic before you tell people that. <laughs> so yeah, it was, uh, wow. So I have now taken to I've, I've I got a haircut and shaved and and looking you know nice and clean cut and put those pictures yeah. up on the website and place the other ones I had and now I've taken to uh, I'm or I'm going to wait for women to contact me I'm not going out looking for any women on online dating anymore I'm just going to start going to karaoke because uh, whenever I sing it's the panty dropper. Okay. So maybe I can pick up some women at karaoke. But, yeah, online dating excitement. (laughs) What happened to the young thing? Well, that's still kind of going on. Uh, I told her that we had moved into the apartment, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the week following that, I barely heard from her. She usually calls me every single day. I barely heard from her. I heard from her like three times in a week. And that was for like five minutes at a time. And uh, stuff. And so uh, she called me, I guess it was Friday. Yeah. uh, Or it might have been Saturday during the day. And uh, I told her, I said, look, you know, know, obviously something's going on with you. And if you don't want to, you know, live together. That's fine, but I'm going to move on. And now she's been calling me, you know, a couple of times a day uh, and stuff. And you're supposed to find out if there's anything in particular I need to do in order to get her out of the group home. Right. And stuff. So we should know something this week. And if so, she'll be coming down to live with me. And all uh, the stories I can tell. <laughs> Because in case our listener Bill doesn't know, whenever Bunny says the young one, he's not kidding. Uh, she's 19. <laughs> I'm not a dirty old man. I'm, I'm 49, almost 50, but uh, she she chose me. I didn't choose her. And uh, I told her I had to think about it for a couple of days after she asked me to go out with her. So, you know, please, let's 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 hear those letters. Uh, what What's that email address, Bunny? Dying at UndeadCow.com, or or you can go to our page, Dying Generation, on Facebook, and you can bitch and call us horrible there. Yep, because I haven't been lambasted enough this week. No, no. (laughs) So let's hear from the ladies out there about what a twisted bastard I am. (laughs) How dare you be homeless? (laughs) So what's been going on with you? Priceless. It's almost like can you can you maybe not be handicapped? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I told you know she, one one of the things she was saying is she was like she was like God, you probably wouldn't even be able to take a vacation. And I'm sitting there thinking mm, if I get into disabled housing, I'll have about eleven hundred dollars left over a month. I'll be able to take a cruise every month if I want to. Oh, and guess what? I won't have to ask somebody for permission to take time off. <laughs> but I did not say that to her after 
after after I figured out that she was, you know, totally using this to discount me, I, I figured there was no use. So I just sat there and listened to her because, you know, I write books and I always need, uh, you know, subject matter for books. So thought of thought of a thought of a new book to write, and I'm going to use that experience in it. <laughs> you, so, you already thought of one. Oh yeah. What do you got? It's 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 sort of based on a theory that I have called the wild horse theory, which is that okay. you, you know you see you see women with guys who just treat them like shit. Not really like shit. They just treat them like they don't give a fuck about them. Right. And the women just absolutely adore them. It's like you know eternal love with these guys mm-hmm. and stuff. And so it's going to be about this nice guy who. Who, uh, you know, he's a nice guy. He cares about women. He's interested in talking to them. You know, unfortunately, he always gives them the boyfriend experience on the yeah. phone and develops the wild horse theory that, that women want something that, that, that only things that are hard won need anything to a woman. It's only if they have to fight for something. You know, if they get that little bit of positive attention out of a guy who does not give a crap is the only yeah. time that they care, you know. So that's the wild horse theory, and so I'm going to write a book about it. Okay. So don't steal my idea. This, this show's copyrighted. Yep. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So, so yeah. But, yeah, yeah I'm working tonight from uh, 9 p.m. to 8 a.m., and then probably working – uh, yeah, and then probably work in 5 p.m. to 8 a.m. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Uh-huh. And uh, at the beginning of December, I go down to part-time, and then third week of December, I should receive my first disability check, and then I retire. Good. Mm-hmm. Good. At least you got a good working plan there. As long as as long as the funds don't run out before I die. Yeah. And I haven't gotten any notification as to whether I'm getting my back pay or not, but since I went with an advocacy group, I should be getting uh, six months' worth of back pay, hopefully. I would think so, yeah. 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 So are, are you going to start, like, working on your Iron Man suit or anything like that? or My what? Your Iron Man suit? No. <laughs> you're not, you're not going to become a superhero? <laughs> no, I'm going to become a professional writer. Okay. Oh, and, this, this, make, this and make these podcast and make these podcasts with you, and you know, and spend spend my days writing and watching television. And since it's now legal to possess marijuana in Harris County, I might go back to smoking pot. That sounds like a a very worthwhile plan. Yes, it does. <laughs> It sounds like it could be a plan. Oh, so a little tidbit of funny here. Okay. We have two dogs, okay? Uh, my friend, my roommate has a seven-month-old dog that is the mother of my puppy, and my puppy okay. is about nine weeks old. Well, the older dog loves to chew things up. I mean, just is terrorizing the apartment. It has ripped a big hole in the carpet and dig it in the carpet and has chewed up a bunch of crap. Well, it apparently chewed through the electrical cord on the DVD player. Uh Uh-huh. And the live end of it was still just sitting on the floor, so luckily our apartment didn't burn to the ground. So my puppy goes over there and is, like, playing around with a piece of it that's not connected, and all of a sudden he goes over to the live wire bites, and I hear, (laughs) I was like, yeah, you won't be doing that again, will you? Maybe we should unplug this. (laughs) <laughs> I, I I was I was just thinking that, that if the apartment did burn down, that's kind of the point where you would just kind of have to like stand there staring at the blaze for a little while and just like <sighs> and then walk in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I mean, I am a Buddhist, you know, so so burning myself alive is definitely in the game plan. <clears throat> you know those Buddhist monks during the Vietnam War or whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I just like look at the flame and go, okay, so I'm living in my car. 
hopefully, hopefully I'll get a big chunk of that pay so I can just buy an RV is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find one that's not a pull behind. But there are actually some have been looking in the uh, Craigslist. Right. And there are some decent size, like 26 footers and bigger for like 3,500 to 6,000. Yeah. That appear to be in good shape and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm seriously uh, considering doing that. And then just parking it in an RV park. That would be cool. And stuff, you know, and six, 600 a month this one RV park is, and it's, you know, free electric, water, and Wi-Fi. Uh-huh. <clears throat> That's good. That's, that's good. So that would be cool. But I'm also <clears throat> getting ready to fill out an application for this one. Because uh, my mom is retired. She's not disabled. Uh, but right. she's on Social Security now. And uh, she was living in this one place uh, not too far from here, about 20 minutes from here in Houston. That The apartments were pretty nice. They were very small, which you know, is fine with me. I like a small place. Uh, but they were fairly nice apartments. They were specifically for people on Social Security and Social Security disability. And my mom was saying it takes about six months to get into one of those, so I was probably going to run up there and fill out an application. Yeah. And uh, maybe do that. If not, then uh, me and my roommate are talking about possibly going to Seattle. Cool. Mm hmm. I know you at one time were talking about that. We were talking about that, and then we stopped. Then we stopped talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's probably good that at some point you stop talking about it because, I mean, you know, you do need sleep. <laughs> But, yeah, we've been talking about that, and then he said he also wants to go live in Europe, but I won't be able to do that on disability because I can't be out of the country for more than 30 days at a time. Yeah. And so, stuff, but, uh, where, where in Europe was he thinking, though? Well, he's from Europe. Uh-huh. He's originally from Europe and then lived, grew, grew up most of his life in Mexico. And uh, so he was talking, like, Germany, going to Germany first because he speaks fluent German. Yeah. And stuff, and then, you know, travel around to different countries. But I'll have to wait for the, the big movie bucks and book bucks to come in in order to do that. Any kind of word on the on the movie front? Yes, actually. Uh, <clears throat> there is some news. Um, on Empty, uh, the big production that we're trying to put together, uh, this woman that I have as a casting agent uh, was also was talking to this new production company that a friend of a friend of a friend is starting. Right. And um, was talking about getting funds for the other movie that she's helping cast. And then whenever they told her that they were looking for, like, first-time screenwriters and first-time directors, yeah, she thought of me. And so she contacted the guy, and he said, well... He said, I'm getting on a plane right now. Why don't you go ahead and send it to me, and I'll read it on the flight. Uh-huh. So, have an actual L.A. production company looking at the script, and uh, and hopefully going to hear back from them by the end of the month or the middle of December, and then have started putting together another <clears throat> feature film production that I want to do first called Shape of Madness. Right. And uh, got a money guy looking at it, uh, hoping we can do the entire thing for about thirty-five thousand. And uh, the one, one of the leads has read it and loved it. Uh, he's got his wife, who's going to play the wife in the movie, and uh, suggests a young woman to play the young girl and the young woman in the movie. She's reading the script, and also this guy Larry McKee, who is the number one cinematographer in Houston. And stuff. He's a really great cinematographer, and he is talking about working with us on a reduced rate to get it made. And uh, so I asked him if he'd care to read the script itself and give me an estimate of how many days he thinks it would take to shoot. He was like, love to. So I sent it to him, so I'm waiting to hear back from him and the actress. All right. And uh, so I might be uh, making one film in January and another one in March. Cool. That would be very mm-hmm. cool indeed. 
That would be very, very cool. But thinking that the one in March, I might have somebody else direct. Mm, which one? Chief of Madness or Empty? Empty. Empty. Okay. Yeah, uh, because I, I met this guy uh, named uh, Kenneth John McGregor. Yeah. He's a bit actor. And uh, he's, uh, it's always real, and his acting is amazing. And he's an acting teacher in Philadelphia and stuff like this. And <clears throat> we had talked about the film uh, because his girlfriend read it. Uh-huh. And uh, he was talking to me about, you know, directing it and stuff. And I think I, I might let him, you know, just because I've seen his acting, and I don't understand why he's not a huge star. His his acting is fucking incredible. And uh, so I could trust him to get realistic, honest performances out of the actors probably more than I could, you know. Mm-hmm. And so looking into that, if the production company comes with 150000 or more, uh, then I'll probably hire him to direct it. And then from now on, I'm just going to write and hire him and be a producer. I'm going to put together films, you know, casts and directors and stuff like that and just get them made and not have to do it because I really can't do it on disability. Yeah. You know, especially with the disabilities that I have. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, but, uh, yeah, like, uh. Would you like to remind the audience what they, what those are? <clears throat> what those are? Sure. Let's list them. <laughs> well, one, I've got, uh, some fairly severe upper back problems. Oh, you know what? You know what? You know what? Okay, wait huh. a minute. What if, oh, we don't have any prizes, though, yet. Oh, oh if they can remember them? List, like, no, if you, if you, like, just list the symptoms. <laughs> just from the symptoms to see if they can guess the illness. <laughs> no, there you go. I think I think that what we should have is 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 a contest to see if they can remember what we said. <laughs> but um, you know, Bill, I know Bill's listening, but who knows who else is? Uh, but yeah, I, so I got the upper back problems. I, I usually can't stand or sit for more than two hours without my spine just being on fire. Right. And uh, then uh, some psychological stuff, some PTSD, uh, bipolar, psychosis, and major depression. Mm-hmm. And yes, people, I'm a fun guy to party with. He, he totally is. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. And so, you know, being around a large group of people or even a small group of people, you know, because I can't, I don't do well around others. Um, to be around a group of people that I'm in control of and stuff, and if things start going not my way or not well, I could possibly completely freak out. Yeah. So, don't want to do that, and so I might be asking this uh, Kenneth John McGregor to direct the film for me. Yeah. Now, now, if we can guarantee that if you do freak out, you we get it on camera. Out. You start talking like bird, then I would be so down to shoot in the back of the the, 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 the <laughs> <special> <laughs> man. Because if you start freaking out and just start going, I can't handle this. I can't handle this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, man, have you seen that movie? Em- that movie Empty? Yeah, yeah. But have you seen the bonus features? <laughs> the, the DVD gets more well known for the bonus features than the film itself. Well, you know what? So far, the best bonus features I have ever seen for any movie is um, the bonus features for Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Yeah. The one that starred Vigo Mortensen. Okay. Because the special features was just everybody involved in that movie. Because that movie was fucking awful. Yeah. The special features just consisted on everybody there blaming the other fucking person. <laughs> Round table of blame going on. It was just like the greatest thing to watch ever. Nice. <laughs> well, if this one did, uh, oh, it, it would have turned out better. And, uh, and if this didn't have a... Uh, <laughs> wow. I'll have to check that out. Because, yeah, it was, it was pretty awful. Yeah. Was yeah. that the new oh, generation oh, or whatever? No, no, this was the... Oh, my 
my God, just, just the fact that you have to say it like sounds in Texas these days. This was the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. <laughs> okay, but there was one that was called New Generation that had, like, Roseanne Arquette or some shit in it, wasn't there? Uh, fairly recently, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, they've been trying to reboot Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Well, I, saw the, uh, I saw the reboot, and it, it, it was actually pretty good. It wasn't too bad. Well, the question is, which reboot did you see? They, they rebooted it twice already. It's, it's like a damn Windows computer. They've rebooted it so many times. <laughs> it's like my cheap-ass Windows phone. Yeah. I mean, they came out uh, with the remake of Texas Chainsaw in, like, in like uh, the 2000s at some point. Yeah. And then, again, they they just came out with one the other year. Yeah. Another remake of Texas Chainsaw, which I think was in 3D or some shit. Yeah. Like that matters. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so no, the one I the one I saw the one I saw was that uh, starts with these kids going out into the woods looking for a uh, pot throw. Yeah. And then they're camping, and then they get killed, and and then or no, that was I'm sorry, that was Friday the Thirteenth. <clears throat> that was the new Friday the 13th, which I thought was pretty cool because they have this big, long, like, 30-minute section where all these people get killed, and you're like, wow, that's the movie, and then all of a sudden they show the title and you realize there's all another movie coming. <laughs> it was pretty fucking cool. I was like, oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I, I had seen that one, I had just seen that one once, Texas Chains, uh, sorry, Friday the 13th remake, mm-hmm. and I remember, I remember it not being bad, but I don't no, it was pretty like, good. Memories of it. Oh no, I, I, that's what I'm saying. It was good enough that I actually remember stuff from it, and I actually kind of liked it. Yeah, you know, I, I thought it was good. Not as good as the My Bloody Valentine remake. The remake was good. The original. The re- was good. Well, see, I'm a freak for the original. It's my favorite slasher film. Yeah, and whenever I heard there was a new one coming out and it was going to be in 3D, I'm like, okay, 3D, that's cool. And then I'm like, but you know, the the way they do remakes these days, it's it's going to be you know some horrible, boring piece of crap. And then I watched it, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. I love this yeah. one. They even cool. had like a, they even had like some of the original gags, like the heart in the the heart in the candy box, yeah. and uh, body in the dryer. And stuff like that from the original movie, which was really cool. And so, but yeah, it was just really good. And the sequences in 3D inside the mine were awesome. Yeah. It was very cool. <laughs> yeah. But I finally got my movie collection back. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Uh, okay. While I was living in my car, a friend of mine held on to four boxes for me, and... uh and I got my movie collection back. Would you like to hear the contents of the movie collection? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> For our listeners out there, we have the complete first season of Saturday Night Live. Uh, the oh, Panic okay. in Needle Park, Al Pacino's first starring role. That was Miller's. First? How was it? That, that was, oh, it's beautiful, dude. It's an awesome film. Yeah. All of these are awesome films. Um, Miller's Crossing by the Coen Brothers. Okay. Uh, American Pop by Ralph Bacci. Yeah. Shock Treatment, the sequel to Rocky Horror. Yes. Sorcerer of Roy Scheider, have you ever seen that? About the guys transporting unstable dynamite across the uh, Amazon in trucks. No, but I've, I've heard it. I've heard it's excellent. It is. It's really good. That's, um, was that William Friedkin, I think? Yes, it was. It was. Okay. And then Wait Until Dark with Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> yeah. Straw Dogs, the original, with Dustin Hoffman. Yeah. Uh, one of my personal favorites, Tim Lizzy, The Boys Are Back in Town, which is an old, like, 1977 concert from Australia. Uh-huh. Uh, the pilot and first season of Twin Peaks. Cool. Uh, have, you, have, you, have you heard that Twin Peaks is coming back? Yes, I have. My son told me. I can't wait. It's supposed to be 2016 or something like that. Yeah, and then we've got the complete jam, which, which would be which would be twenty five years 
from when Laura Palmer said in the original series, I will see I'll you, see in, you 25 in 25 years. years. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. No, we've got the complete jam, which jam was a uh, new wave uh, band from England. Hell in the Pacific by John Borman. Okay. Polyester, the scratch and sniff odorama movie by by uh, John Waters, and I have the scratch and sniff cards too. Yeah. A movie called Rock Opera that was directed by a friend of mine. My personal favorite Animal Gone Wild movie, Grizzly. 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 Yeah, we watched we watched Grizzly together that that one night. Yeah. Uh, in Intoxicating, which is a film that was made by another friend of mine. Uh, the Four Seasons with Hal and Alda. Great movie. Yeah. Hair the Musical. Mm-hmm. My second favorite film of all time, Valley Girl. Okay. Uh, Pennies from Heaven. My Bloody Valentine, the original. Uh huh. Frailty. Have you ever seen this? Frailty is excellent. Yeah, I own Frailty. Oh my dude, it's I I I think I've watched it like thirty or forty times. It's just and it just keeps getting funnier every time I see it. <laughs> Uh, Phase Four, the Ant movie. Oh yes, uh, coming yeah. at you, uh, '60s western in 3D that I actually have the 3D copy of. Which one? Uh, coming at you. Coming at you. Okay. Uh, Times Square, the movie that killed Robert Stigwood's career, the guy who produced Saturday Night Fever and Urban Cowboy. Yeah. Yeah, Times Square is a really great movie about these two oh, people who Square. went away I in New York. I love that movie. I know. I and love it, that movie with Tim Curry as the radio DJ. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And then I've got Roadie with Meatloaf. Okay. Uh, the Filth and the Pure, a Sex Pistols documentary that's pretty badass. Yeah. Friday the Thirteenth Part Three in 3D. All right. The new My Bloody Valentine 3D. Heroes with Henry Winkler and Excellent. Sally Field. Yeah. Squirm. Squirm. The Killer Worm movie. My yeah. all-time favorite movie, Marty, with Ernest Borgnine, which was like, like the 1958 uh, Academy Award winning uh, best feature. Right. And of course, I got my copy of Haunted Trailer. Y'all run out and get your copy today. And <laughs> the big where box can they, set of, Where can they get that? They can get that just about anywhere. Uh, here in Houston, you can get it at Fry's Electronics, actually, on the shelf. You can go to BestBuy.com, Target.com, um, Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, and a bunch of places. If you go to some place that sells DVDs online at the major retailer, they probably have it. And I believe the price has been reduced to fourteen ninety five. And uh, if you buy a copy and see one of us in public, we will sign it for you for free. All right. All right. But, uh, yeah, that's my uh, movie collection. As it stands. Of course, I had to leave the 600 DVD movie collection in Colorado Springs when I got divorced because, uh, you know, I, 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 I almost had to get into a fiscal altercation just to get the movies I have. Really? Yes. There were actually only about four movies on the shelf that were hers. Uh huh. But whenever I told her I was going to sell the DVD, she was like, no, you're not. I'm keeping them. Okay. And I mean, plenty more masterpieces in that collection, too. So, so, that, that, so that's pretty much I'm going to keep you movies just to hurt you kind of a thing, right? Oh, wow. I'd never thought of that. I mean, I mean, she couldn't give a fuck about it. <laughs> never, never dawned on you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that never occurred to me, Bunny. I mean, seriously. Uh, yeah, I need. I know. I need to work on my sarcasm. It's, it's way. It's way too sharp. I got. I keep getting my brother Tim all the time. He'll, you know, <clears throat> say something, and I'll come back with some sarcastic comment. He goes, "Really? No, <laughs> joking." But you know, whenever you have such a finely uh, defined sense of wit as I do. <clears throat> oh, wow. Did you just see my shoulder pop out of socket when I patted myself on the back? 
I, I, I did not hear that, no. Okay, it was Try pretty it loud. Try it again. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. <laughs> Uh, you know what? You know what I just wa- rewatched yesterday, which is like I am really not big into westerns, but this is one that just I just absolutely love. My name is Nobody. Yeah, hey, you you must have seen that. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Now, my favorite western is Silverado. Silverado with Kevin Klein. Well, well, I, I I'm sure I've seen Silverado, but like again, my I don't respond well to very many westerns. You know, it's just a, a couple of odd one-offs. That's on American. That, that get my attention. You know, uh, we just recently watched rewatched Tombstone, and that is a fun thing. Ugh. 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 Really? Yeah, I just didn't like Tombstone. <laughs> I don't know. It just... I don't know. It just sort of laid there. Oh, I don't think it laid there at all. Nah, I, I don't know. I just never liked that movie. I like Silverado. I like The Searchers with John Wayne. Yeah. Uh, True Grit, the original True Grit was on the other night, as well as The Sons of Katie Elder. That's a good movie. Uh-huh. And, uh, oh, yeah, it's all uh, a while back called Django Unchained. Uh yeah, I just saw I just saw Django a couple of nights ago. Loved it. So what did you think of? You know. Hello, are you, you still there? Okay. I'm right here. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> I thought Django was spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, and my brother Tim says it's not really a western. I said, yeah, it is. It's Bounty Hunters in the West. That's western. Yeah, but it's not really. <laughs> I think we have had this conversation. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I loved the movie. I thought it was an awesome piece of work. Uh, really, really kind of surprising from from Quentin because he's usually Mister, you know, slick pop culture guy, and this was a really excellently made and written film that was full of <clears throat> meaning and you know stuff like that. It was it was really really good. Yeah. Yeah, and the Django character himself really came along throughout the course of that movie. Yeah. From from being fairly well a, a beaten down slave at the beginning of it. To being the badass kicking your ass in this fucking gut hero. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I am sorry that they didn't do the coffin full of weapons, though. Have you ever seen any of the original Django movies? Mm-mm. Yeah. Django is a strange character. He's he's almost a character that like the character himself yeah. has sort of fallen into the public domain where there have been a million spaghetti westerns and a few Japanese movies starring Django. Oh yeah. The original Django, which may have been just Franco, I'm not sure offhand. But that movie opens with him walking through what a field! I want I want to say a desert, but it's not a desert because it was raining. Um, big empty space. Yeah. Okay. Walking through there, dragging a coffin behind him. This is the opening credits. And it's yeah. Like, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then at one point he opens up the coffin, and it is just full of just weapons. Nice. <laughs> sort of, sort of like uh, Antonio Banderas's guitar case. Yeah. 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 So now we know where Robert Rodriguez stole that from. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you know, like Shakespeare said, there's nothing new under the sun, and that was how fucking long ago. Yeah. Um. So, I I I hit a a rich vein on YouTube for movies. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes sometimes you, you go looking for a movie and you can't find this and you can't find that. And then sometimes you look for something and you find it and then you keep coming up with cool other movies in the sidebar. Yeah. So you have to keep digging. So that's where that's where I found my, my name is Nobody. Um, yeah. There's, there's also a, a Larry Cohen movie. 
God told me to. Never seen it. Have you seen this? No. Interesting. Really cheap. Looks like it might have been made for television. Um, <clears throat> but kind of interesting uh, where a rash of killings breaks out in New York mm -hmm. uh, with each one of the killers saying that God told them to just before yeah. they die. Yeah. So, good movie. Also, Larry Cohen, I found Q, the winged serpent. I haven't watched that one yet. Yes. But I'm, I'm going to have to watch it. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. <laughs> the, the Night Strangler. Oh, yeah. That. My mom yeah. turned me on to that one. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, there's no wonder I'm fucked up. The movies my mom showed me as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> like those, like those two movies, like both the Night Stalker and the Night Strangler. I just absolutely loved those movies. Mm -hmm. But then when it came to the Colchak TV series, I, I didn't like that at all. Yeah, it was too short. It was too stupid. It was too the same each week. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that kind of a thing. That's why I can't Stalker. watch like. That's why I can't watch NCIS and CSI and stuff like that, because it's so formulaic that you know that the first five clues are, are just red herrings, and that, mm -hmm. you know, 45 minutes into the show, they're going to find that thing that got overlooked by everyone that yeah. solves the crime, you know, and you're like, ugh. But people love it. <laughs> People, it's, you know, NCIS is the number one show on television, so, ooh, God. What happened to our country, buddy? Uh, I, I blame fluoridated water. That's, that's my fluoridated opinion. water, okay. And chemtrails? Yeah. Uh, and chemtrails, no, chemtrails are actually pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> they're good for you. It's like yeah. vitamin C. Every time a, a plane flies by, you just kind of go. Yeah, take a deep breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you got your RDA of chemtrails today? RDA? Your, yeah, your recommended daily allowance. Oh, I see. Uh, <laughs> no, I've been inside most of the day. So I'm oh, going to have okay. to correct that tomorrow. I'm going to have to do a double dose. Yeah, so how's the, how's the pot in Colorado lately? Did you get your card back? Uh, I have not, but I still have plenty to tide me over. Oh, okay, um, cool. It, it, it's good. It's good. It's good. Um, so, uh, well, so just finally for the B movie list on my on YouTube, my YouTube mm -hmm. page, I'm kind of thinking I haven't have I haven't still have all the details worked out, but I'm thinking of opening it up and and calling it Adopt a Movie, so that. People can come and adopt one of these movies and maybe do a little video synopsis or a review of it that I would put before the movie. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And if, if the movie drops off of YouTube, which is the biggest thing of having a list like this. Yeah. YouTube is really weird about what it lets us say, and it really seems in a lot of cases who it is. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's like, oh, you can't have that movie. The other person over here, they can. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you adopt a movie, you can do a little video for it, and I would put that in front of the movie, okay? But then you are then responsible for that movie. So if that movie drops off the list, so does your synopsis. Yeah. So you, so you have to you have to re up it. Right. And so you can find it someplace else where I would put it back on the list with your synopsis. Mm hmm. There you go. Sounds like a good idea. So adopt a movie, and you would not necessarily – I don't have all the details worked out, so this is not an official announcement. But, but you know, if you, if you have a movie that's not on the list, fine, submit it. Yeah. You know, is it a good movie? Did you find something good I don't have? Cool. What is it? Let's put that up there. Yeah. Found Duel. Oh, nice. Dennis Weaver? Yeah. Black yeah. Christmas. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, let me let me just read down this because this is all, you know, you could tell you, 
it, it's really like gold mining where you strike a vein and all the movies wind up being very similar. So Black Christmas Duel burnt offerings, let's scare Jessica to death the night yeah. that Evelyn came out of the grave and the house that dripped blood. Yes. <laughs> I actually watched Let's Scare Jessica to Death about a year ago. It, it came up yeah. on one of the free movie channels here. Yeah. Wow, what an awful piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I remember loving that movie as a kid. Because <laughs> they used to show it a lot in, in, out of Chicago and stuff. But then I watched it as an adult. And I'm like, wow, this is really fucking horrible. <laughs> I'm starting to get a migraine. <laughs> it was that kind of movie, you know, where you just like want to pull a tooth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like moving a rock to reveal a big hole, and you look in the hole, and you're like, oh my god, it's the leprechaun goal. One is down there. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we lost 1971, but here it is. Yeah, but 1971 dropped off the planet. Yeah, um, exactly. So yeah, the pop's good. Uh, we we shot another series of uh, Bob's Thirty Shorts last night, so mm-hmm. the pot and the beer were flowing pretty well. Yeah, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and that uh, like the first shoot was excellent. The second shoot not so good. This is rivaling where maybe it, it might be the best shoot. Cool. So. Um, and this was one where, where like, I, I didn't go in with anything prepared or anything like that. It was just like, let's just sit here and go back and forth. And as I come up with things to say, I'll just say it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Cool. So, uh, <laughs> I did a, uh, remember I told you I did that one with Marilyn Monroe, which turned into, um, the AA kind of atonement or whatever the fuck that thing is called. Yeah. You go around and tell everybody you're sorry and amends. Amends. Okay. And uh, <laughs> he was like, "Well, this is it. Yeah, I, I know I'm supposed to tell you in person, but I don't have the time, so it's just going to be this video." Yeah. <laughs> I I called it I called it back again uh, last night, and I was like. Yeah, I remember uh, I told you about the atonement. Well, it's all up on my website now, so there's my apology. I'm sorry. I told you that. Um, <laughs> you know, all the horrible things I did to, to, to you when I when the, when I was drunk, and you know, and I I I forget what fucking step this is, and you know, but I get a gold coin for it. You know, it's kind of like a Boy Scout merit fucking badge. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That, that's it, Steve. Just go ahead and shit all over seventy or eighty years worth of uh, people getting sober. <laughs> that's the fun of it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> if you can't crap all over something, what good is it? Exactly. Mhm. Exactly. I hear you. Especially something that has a long-standing tradition. <clears throat> yeah. So. Yeah. If I so, understand. Uh, so I've been cutting that most of the day, uh, and I think I'm fairly close to getting all the chunks cut up, and got a lot of them, so it's, so it's going to be another good run. Um, and I think there's a lot of really good stuff in here. So. Cool. So that's Bob's Dirty Shorts. It's already running, so check it out on YouTube at undeadcowfilms.com. Uh, no, YouTube, users, Undead Cow Films. Check it out there. Bob's Dirty Shorts. There you go. Well, it looks like we're almost out of time here. All right. You want to go ahead and pimp? I just pimped. You just pimped. That's all you're pimping. That's that's good for my pimping for now. Okay. Well, then, uh, my uh, the listener, Bill, if you haven't gotten your copies yet, uh, you can find my books on Amazon.com. There is The Alleys Ran Red, a horror detective novel. Reddit Friday and Other Tales, a multi-genre collection of short, short stories, and under the nom de plume, Maxwell Robeson, The Spy and Mom's Clothing. You can also find my first film uh, that I co-wrote out on DVD now called Haunted Trailer with Ron Jeremy. And that's pretty much all the pimping I got. Okay. 
Well, that is it for this week. We will see you next week at Undying Generation. Remember, you can email us at dying at undead that dying at undeadcow.com and like our Facebook page, Dying Generation, and you can follow us at Twitter at dying. All right, and you are? I am Bunny Williams, and you are? I'm Stephen Scott Norfolk. Be good or be careful. <laughs>